and Ian again. All right, fans, here we go with a battle of the undefeated 12 rounds of boxing for the Commonwealth Super Middleweight Championship. Introducing to you first, the challenger on my left, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing dark blue trunks with silver trim. He weighed in at 12 stone even. He is undefeated in his campaign in the ring with a record of 12 wins, no losses, with eight wins coming by way of knockout. Hailing from Edinburgh, Scotland, please welcome the Commonwealth gold medalist and the Celtic super middleweight champion. Here is the undefeated Kenny Anderson. And his opponent across the ring, the defending champion on my right, fighting out of the red corner, wearing silver trunks. He weighed in at a ready 11 stone, 13 pounds, 8 ounces. He also is undefeated in his campaign with a record of 10 wins, no losses, 8 wins coming by way of knockout from Hammersmith in London. Tonight he is making his first title defense. Please welcome the exciting young undefeated Commonwealth Super Middleweight Champion, introducing George the Saint Rose. Once again, our referee in charge now to give instructions, Dave Paris. Well, I, I spoke to you both in the dressing room, boys. You know I respect you. Break when I tell you to. Defend yourself at all times. Shake hands, boys. Keep it clean. Okay, boys. Good luck. How good is Groves? We're about to find out more. He won this title, stopping Charles Adamu, the Ghanaian, in six rounds here in April, Second flooring him three round times. One. Defending the title here in the grey, or if you like, silver trunks. George Groves, the black of Scotland's Kenny Anderson. It's an Anglo-Scottish battle here. Anderson can punch a little bit. And sometimes, just sometimes, Groves' defence can look a little leaky and his hands are low and he leaves his chin up a bit. But he has lots and lots of glass. Yeah, he's shown a hot head a couple of times in some of his early fights. Well, that uh, he can't show that tonight. It has to keep cool. Anderson will stay on his, on his tail all the way around. He likes to be aggressive, and you can see already he's not having any trouble getting close to Groves. Groves looking a little bit loose. He's looking fluid, but he's he's dropping his arms. He's pulling away from punches already. Nice little burst back from Groves. But he must keep his mind on the job here. Concentration is a must. Any right hand, fast hands, you can see of Groves. Good defence, I must say, from Kenny Anderson. So far, blocked a lot of those on the gloves and arms. Trying to wind up Groves at the way in by knocking off his hat and sticking his face into Groves' face. It was all a bit unnecessary. Groves is a fairly languid, quietly spoken character out of the ring. Rather different in it. I mean, one point is that Anderson is a mature man of 27. Groves is really only a kid of 22. So Anderson obviously trying to get under his skin, uh, trying to needle him, draw him into a, a slugfest. But you can see Groves obviously boxing to instructions in the opening round. Still loose defensively. Nice upper body movement as he moves around the ring. He does tend to drop his hands. But he settled quickly, Groves. Yeah, there's still something of the boxing baby about him, even though he's picked up a, a title, George Groves. And accidents do happen sometimes in even the careers of the most talented operators. See, I think we have a situation with boxers like De Gale and the Groves. They're, they're competing with, with each other without boxing each other. They all want to steal a little march going for titles maybe a little bit earlier than you would have imagined they would have done so as I said in the, as he was coming into the ring he take on the responsibilities he's boxing well he's making Anderson miss here but he's using up a lot of steam in the opening round with all this unnecessary movement he was caught with that one so 
I mean, you don't want to be boxing 12 rounds with this kind of movement. You'll want to settle down and start throwing punches that count with a bit more purchase in them. It's allowing Anderson in close on the ropes there. Decent opening oh, round. Uh, Grove settled quickly, landing some nice jabs. A lot of good movement, but I thought he used up a lot of energy with that movement. He won't want to be doing that for 12 rounds. Two times ABA champion down at middleweight in his days with the Dale Youth Amateur Boxing Club in West London. He's a clubmate of James Degoe, who he beat in the Northwest London Divisionals four years ago. Fought for nothing then. They'll be fighting for plenty, I think. If and when they do get to meet each other, if he keeps this title tonight, Groves and James DeGale can beat Paul Smith in a British title fight on December the 11th. The meeting could come up quite soon. Good defence there. Anderson getting close though, just fighting solid. The more experienced of these two, just. Anderson is showing that he's quite prepared to let some punches go. He doesn't mind missing with a couple as long as the, the last couple of the bus get home. So I feel that uh, Groves is going to have to put some meat into his punches if he wants to discourage this fellow. Got a good repertoire though, Groves. Flashy, slashing punches that he can put together. But he does take the odd risk, doesn't he, with his gloves low. Yeah, but he works on reflexes, which is fine. The problem you have uh, with that kind of boxing in the later rounds of a tough fight, you don't have those reflexes. And if your defensive habits are bad, then that's when you can pay the price. Just quite happy to box on the back foot, it would seem, so far, looking for counters. I think he's looking to frustrate Anderson. I'm not sure if I see a little cut. And Anderson's eye. I see a little bit of redness. He's had his back to me since I first saw that, so I'm looking forward to turn. I thought there was a little bit of damage in the, the left eye, but still haven't had a chance to, to inspect that yet. Yep, I think Groves is trying to frustrate Anderson. And then obviously a frustrated fighter starts making mistakes. No signs of that happening yet, but Groves, he's boxing well. Maybe looking to set the odd trap as well for Kenny Anderson, who is five years older and does have that distinction of being a commonwealth games gold medalist which is not to be sniffed at. yeah there's a little bit of blood up by the bridge of the nose where it meets the eye You're quite right eagle eyed jim looking for those big looping right hands there doesn't get careless anderson on the way in he might be made to pay for that see that's what i mean with the frustrating tactics uh Anderson, he's kept a cool head himself. He's just trying to get close, but he's going to have to start pinning Groves down. He's going to have to walk across, try to maneuver him into corners as opposed to following him around. See, he's just missing when he lets his punches go. Also tiring when you're missing with punches. That's the little nick. Anderson on his nose actually so that no, sign, no reason that that should worsen and have any effect on the outcome of this fight Stoic, Stoic, calm Stoic, that's a word you don't hear too often in the corner isn't it? Stoic is the advice given to George Groves from Adam Bill and calm Nice well, and cool is what they want from him. Yeah, well, what he's doing is working, and I think one of the main worries would be that he was drawn into a battle as he has been in some of his earlier fights. But he's boxing to instructions here. He's doing exactly as he's been told, and he is frustrating Anderson. Anderson's going to have to raise the pace and find a way to pin Groves down. See, the, these punches that Groves throws, you know, you're using up a lot of steam, a lot of movement. Anderson gets through, he gets through with the right hand. A couple looked disorganised in defence there. Groves. That, that's what's wrong when you're pulling away from the original attack. You have nowhere else to go if the punches keep coming. And that is a lack of experience and it's a fault that, that Groves has had since he turned pro. Again, he's trapped on the ropes. He looks to slide away and give Anderson some angles. But at times here, 
it equates really to carelessness in defence. I think he's going to have to gain Anderson's respect to with some meat in the punches. The frustration tactics seem to work for a couple of rounds, but Anderson's getting too close now. And there's a kind of slackness about Groves's work. Still glancing blow with the right hand. That was a more meaty one. The second one wasn't. That's troubled him. The first one was. The second one wasn't. And Groves has to hold on. He's had a scare before in his career. And there's and a cut on the cheek poke as well, but that hardly matters at the moment because Groves is going through a bad spell here. And Anderson's after him. He senses it. See, it's that looseness about his boxing and he's shaking again. That was a good solid left hook. Anderson landing some real quality shots in this round. And this guy is tough. He will keep coming. This could develop into a very hard night for the starlet George Groves, who sags a bit, looks a little tired. He's hung around on the ropes for too long. Not a great idea when you've got low slung gloves like him. No. Uh, if this is the way they're prepared for Kenny Anderson, then I think they've made big mistakes. He's going to have to box more like his normal fight, put some meat into the shots, but this has been a tremendous round for Kenny Anderson. He is dominating at the moment. Despite that cut on his cheekbone, they won't worry much about that. He's after Groves here, and Groves really is just looking for hiding places at the moment. Oh, he's caught again there. Heavily in the right hand, puts him down. Down by the right hand. Oh, it's a crisis now for George Groves. He's up, but can he come through this? Nothing he has done has impressed Anderson in his life as he's caught another left hook. Oh, another one. Two open. Needed to cover up. Down again, Bellwick in the middle of all that. He can hardly walk back to the corner. That was horrendous for George Rose, but brilliant for Kenny Anderson. See, nothing that Groves has done has deterred Anderson the slightest. And he was hit with better punches than that earlier in the round, but that's the one that scored the knockdown, and he was fortunate not to be counted down again just as the bell sounded. But big trouble. Badly shaken, didn't recover from it, and there's a looseness about his boxing since the first bell. He got away with it for a couple of rounds, but Anderson is really on his case now. Well, I wonder whether we're in for a shock here. He's had such a lot of good publicity, George Groves, but he really does have to come through the fire here. He needs to tighten up. You're trying to slug with a slugger, says Adam Booth. I'm not sure Groves could really hear him at the fog cleared by then. You know, I don't think he's slugging with a slugger. I think it's no choice. I think Anderson has grabbed a hold of this fight and he's not letting it go. Groves has no choice. I said before the disaster struck, he would have to put more meat into his punches, gain some respect. And if he doesn't do that, Anderson will continue to walk through. That's what he has to do. Has to put some meat into the punches. Can't allow this match forward of Anderson, who's really on a roll at the moment. I think he needs to put Anderson onto the back foot himself. He can't go backwards against the ropes. If he does that again, it could be curtains. He could be nailed by the next one. I don't think he's strong enough to back Anderson up this early in the fight. And Anderson really is flying at the moment because of the huge uh, third round. He's got to be super cool here and clever grows. And if he can come through this and prevail, it would be something. He's digging his feet into the canvas, trying to find some power. But he's a strong man, Kenny Anderson. And you know, this is what I meant when I said he's still a kid. He's only 22. The super middleweight division, you don't want to be facing the best. At 22 years old, you take that bit longer to mature. All the top guys are well into their 20s. So this is tough and I think it's only going to get tougher. Fascinating though, to see a young prospect given a, a test as demanding as this one. I don't know if we can trust his legs for the 12 rounds because he's using up a lot of energy as he's been doing from the opening round and a 12 round up that is so important. Right hand, that seemed to just for a moment have an effect on Anderson I thought. 
who suddenly looks just not quite as confident himself, but here he comes chugging forward again. Well, that's no knockdown this time. That's again, I think that's a sign of what you were talking about, Jim. It's the the time is still in the legs. It's, it's the legs that you know really you shouldn't be stumbling all over the place. This is like a good solid jab from Anderson. But the impressive punches are still coming from the challenger. Some good work in this round from Groves, but he's not in the driving seat. He's ridiculously easy to hit, Groves. Unless he tightens that defense, I'd venture to suggest he's going nowhere much further. Body shots this time from Anderson. Back comes Groves. Now he's trying to force Anderson back, and there is a bit of power getting to him with body shots. Is that a slight turning of the tide for Groves? Can he sustain it? If he doesn't find the power to subdue Anderson's match forward, he's going to lose this. But Anderson won that round with far better quality punches. All right, good luck. Poor defence, as we've seen in the past from Groves. He's taking far too many punches and far too many solid punches. He did come back with some good work of his own, but you still get the feeling he's forcing the good one. There's nothing flowing from him. Nothing at all. He's having to work for everything. Round five. George Groves in the silver trunks and beaten so far. Commonwealth champion, lauded, few rave reviews. But here's the reality of life in the boxing ring. There's always a scare coming up. There's always something to test you. What can he do about this? Can he turn it round? I think he did hurt Anderson a couple of times in that last round. Anderson not trying not to waste punch. He's trying to make every shot count. So this is a little point where Groves maybe should be taking the initiative a little bit quicker. Still on the back foot. He's been told by the corner, you've got to box. And Adam Booth told, asked him, can you listen to me? Is your head clear? Which means to say that Adam Booth, the trainer, wasn't totally clear it was. And he still has that looseness about his boxing. He's all over the place. He doesn't have the solid look that Anderson has. Trying to get a bit more snap into his punches. But pretty sure this is far tougher than the Groves camp expected. I think that's it. Absolutely nailed on, certainly. And I'm sure Adam Boo, the trainer of David Hay as well, must be thinking, hello, is it going to be that kind of night here? Uppercut was a good shot from Groves. I think he's been troubled to the body a couple of times, Anderson. A couple of the, the, the shots downstairs for Groves seem to have watched, seem to have stopped him in his tracks. You see him having that look on his face before he, he goes back to work again. I'm just hoping that left eye doesn't close of Anderson. It's a cut, but the swelling could be much more of a problem than the cut. This is better for Groves in this round because Anderson's starting to look a little saggy himself. You Maybe you're right, Jim. Yeah, he was caught. I think the body, body. shot. Yeah. Yep. yep, he's making Anderson miss his own jabs working, but this is still really hard work. I think maturity is going to have a lot to do in the outcome of this fight. And I wonder, is it just a little bit early for the 22-year-old? He's done well, he's pulled himself back together in this round. Lovely jab. Needs more of that. Dominate with that jab. Keep moving, but don't get trapped on the ropes. Because his defence really isn't good enough to be hanging around there. This is Groves' is round so far. Is he clawing his way back into this bit by bit? I'll tell you something, if he does come through this, he'll have learnt a lot tonight. What he is showing is heart at the moment. I think one of the things he'll have learned that he still has a lot of developing to do. Well, Adam Booth in the corner, trying to stay calm with a firestorm breaking around him in this fight tonight. And that he's done too. Do not slug with him, is what he's telling Groves. Just box, use the jab. Anderson was a bit tight at the weight, wasn't he? Yesterday he had to strip naked to get down to 12 stone. So I wonder if that might be a factor as well here. 
I wouldn't expect it to be. I mean, the fact that he didn't make the weight, obviously he's tight at the weight, but the 24-hour wear in advance, you just wonder how much weight Anderson has put on. That is the big problem with the scales 24 hours in advance. If, if one fighter stays pretty much the same weight and the other one heaps on, good shots from Anderson. Just too easy to hit, Groves. And this, of course, changes all perspectives on that much projected showdown with James DeGale, doesn't it? There's a tired look the way Groves just oh. the punches he, He's tired, he wouldn't be hit with those punches if the legs were good. He looks so open, he drops his gloves and offers his head on those ropes. His instincts seem to me to be wrong. He should be keeping his gloves up. Now he does catch Anderson and drives him back, or tries to anyway, to get him on the back foot. Well, I tell you, at this stage in this kind of fight, having the last word in an exchange is very important, and Groves had the last word in that little exchange, and the body shot again troubled Anderson. This is real character the young man is showing here. He's certainly doing that, whatever other faults have been on display here tonight. He's showing guts, heart, courage. There was an earlier fight when Anderson seemed to lose a little bit of heart and his corner had to talk him back into it. I think it was Nathan King he was boxing. So he, he's a tough guy, but he can be dented. His confidence can be dented. And this is a tremendous reply from Young Groves here in this round. What a dramatic start to the night's action here at the MEN Arena in Manchester. Is it going to carry on like this? The body shot again. Those are the punches that are going to win it. These punches will win it for Groves. He's got him going with that, those body shots. Good call, Jimmy. He was sagging again. They were asking about his energy levels in the corner, Anderson. And Groves now looking a different fighter. It's Anderson who has the trouble now. He's unloading with these big, heavy-looking shots. Big red and he's stopped. Groves has come through. Back from the brink to keep his Commonwealth title. At times in there, he looked awful. And on the very verge of defeat, but he has prevailed in a dramatic Commonwealth Championship contest. Goodness me. Ian, you can pick holes technically in his performance tonight, but there are things you cannot put into fighters. And young George Groves has those things in abundance. The determination, the courage, the, you know, the ability to come through the pain and just give a little bit more than the other guy is prepared to take. And that's what he showed here tonight. That was tough. The body shots in, in the previous round changed Kenny Anderson's mind. The tremendous body punches in the finishing round just took every bit of fight out of Anderson. That was a tremendous performance from Young Groves. A lot of it was shaky. Too often he was hit too often. He's a lot to learn, but I tell you, there's something to work with for that young man. He can be proud tonight. There is no quitting him. It's a tremendous desire for victory and for success. And that's with the body shots. That's what took everything away from Kenny Anderson. Kenny Anderson is a real tough nut. There's no quitting him. So the fact that he had, he didn't quit by the way tonight, but the fact that he got himself in such a state, you can see him looking over Groves' shoulder there. He knew he had nothing left. He knew that the tide had turned against him. There was no way he could turn it back. And the referee spotted it and acted bang on time. No complaint there, as you can see from Kenny Anderson. George, 11 straight wins. You keep your Commonwealth belt. It looked tough for us to watch. How tough was it in there for you? Yeah, it was. It was very tough. We knew Kenny Anderson was going to be the best fight I've ever faced. He's unbeaten. He's still a live opponent. He's hungry. And he definitely came to win. He showed uh, a lot of strength in the fight. And I felt a little bit jaded. That might have been because uh, I peaked two weeks ago for that fight and then had to you know, prolong my training. So, um, <coughs> other than that, and I dug deep and I'm still champion. You dug very deep, very loose and languid in the first couple. How much of a crisis was it in the third round? No, I don't think it was too much of a crisis. It obviously caught me and uh, it was a good shot. But you know, I'm not sure how it looked on TV, but I felt calm and composed. Um, I just had to get back to my boxing. You know, it's the first time I've really had a strict game plan to stick to. And I think I struggled with that a little bit. You know, but that's, that's a learning. Uh, as I say, I'm, I'm still pretty much of a novice. Um, I didn't quite stick to the game plan we had, but... Um, I showed that I can outstrength a strong guy and I can dig deep and get the stoppage when I need it. Yeah, you made your mistakes in there, but you did show buckets of courage to come through in the end and work his body really as well. Yeah, yeah we knew that from the, from the start that body shots would work. 
Um, you know, I didn't, I didn't think they'd be that dramatic. You know, was, uh, when one or two went in, you know, he almost folded on himself. And I knew if I keep this going, I'm going to get the stoppage. And so he, he, he dropped his hands from his head. All I'd do is change the, uh, from body to head with the attack. And then the referee.